Good morning, good morning, good morning, family God. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Today is a new day, a new start of a new week, and we God is doing everything new. Every day, God is doing something new in your life. Do you believe that? Can God relate to us? Can God relate to you? Can God relate to me? Question, can we relate to him? Can we believe in what God is doing in our lives? Can we believe in what God has told us in his word? Can we trust in the living word of God? There's a lot of questions that marinate in a lot of people's minds, yet they don't take the responsibility or they don't take the time to check it out for themselves. A lot of people rather just listen to other people to make their decisions. I was thinking about it the other day and people must be thinking uh, I, I visited some people that I haven't seen in a while last week and um, found out that their dad had passed on two months before my visit. And it blew me away. I was like, wow, it's a sudden thing that happened. Um, great family. Um, they treat me well. And um, I love them. You know what I mean? And um, the one um, brother had asked me, hey, are you still doing the church thing? Because remember, people who don't believe um, what I believe pretty much think we're doing something or I'm doing something to make myself feel good or to make my family feel good or to be part of something that I'm not sure about, but I'm just doing it. So, you know, respectfully, so he asked me, are you still doing the church thing? And that's my indicator of, of where he might be in his belief in Christ or whatever. And I said, yeah. And I was thinking in my mind, you know, sat down, I ate, um, they, have, they own a restaurant and I uh, sat down and ate and I was thinking, I said, man, if I'm wrong about Jesus, the Bible, being a Christian, then pretty much I'm wasting my life trying to do things of good morals, right? Doing things that are not bad and harming others. But I'm wasting my life if I'm wrong. If Christians are wrong, we're wasting our time. We're wasting our life, right? That's what the world might be saying. That's why they mock us. They criticize us. They make fun of us. Not, I'm not saying that the, the man that asked me the question was doing that to me. He was just an honest question. And that's the way he sees it. That's me doing something or attached to something. But if I'm right and the person who's not believing in Christ and the Bible, if they're wrong, then they're wasting their eternity. It's a big, you know, a big thing going on here. We're talking about, you're talking about this life because people who don't believe in God and him being human and coming down to rescue us, they, just, they think this way pretty much. You live, you suffer, you die, and that's it. No afterlife, no God, no judgment, no eternity, nothing. That's it. If that's right, man, where is the hope in that? You know, it's pretty much no hope. It's hopeless. And what kind of future are you, you know, what is that? But people actually think that, and I respect that because, hey, I used to think that way also before Christ. Now, if Christians, Christ followers, people who believe in Yahweh God, people who believe in um, Yeshua HaMashiach, right? People who believe in Holy Spirit God in us, working, dwelling in us. When we die, we just change locations. So, and we know our eternal um, destiny is with the Lord, the Creator. So it's either live a life for a span of time and it's short. This side of eternity is so short. And then die and nothing happens. Well then, those people are right. But there is no hope in that, but they're, they're right. But if Christians are right. If I'm right, if what I believe in, if God is real, right, and I die, I change locations, and I go all eternity with him, then who has the hope here? I hope, and I believe, and I trust in a living, loving, righteous, holy God. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's always a choice for people who want to believe, who don't want to believe. It's always a choice. And I can't make that choice for you. And you can't make that choice for me. So we have to decide. And the question to this morning, I woke up and I was looking through the scriptures and looking through my my app, my Bible app. And I was like, that's a good question. The question was, why did Christ, why did the Lord Jesus become human? Because think about it. Why would a holy, loving, almighty, all powerful, all knowing, triune God that was already in the love cycle or the love circle already? didn't really need me or you because he was the lover, the loved one, and the spirit of love all together, three in one, already there. And 
why would he become like me with all my junk and baggage and the mess and my thoughts and um, the frailty of my body and all of that and so finite? Why would an infinite being become finite for a time, right? And then be mocked by his very own people, then live a life that people didn't believe him, made fun of him, accused him, and then die on a gruesome cross, like die a gruesome death. Why would he do that? And that's why I believe a lot of people don't believe because before I got saved, I knew the story of Jesus, what he did for the world. I just didn't think I was part of that world that he died for. Literally, I honestly didn't think, I used to think, oh, he did that for the church people. He did that for good people. He did that for white people. He did that for, you know, I didn't know, had no clue, couldn't make the connection that he did it for me as well. Me and my family died for us, became human and died for us. So we're going to be in Hebrews chapter two, and we're going to see what the scripture says about this question. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Good morning, good morning, good morning. If this is your first time, this is the morning Devo. I try to do these in a 10 o'clock hour, a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. I try my best to get up and do it. I'm not a morning person. I'm a night owl. Last night, I even did a, a radio show on soulwinnerswithaz.org, Celebrated Network, with my six-year-old daughter. And I was letting her hear seven tracks, seven different tracks of music of Christian gospel rappers and Christian um, hip-hop artists and their songs. And I just wanted her honest opinion, what she thought about the songs. And we did that last night. If you missed it and you want to hear that, just inbox me and I'll send you the link to the to the audio. So let's move on. Uh, it looks like very quiet today. And I know we were having some issues at church yesterday with um, seeing comments and all that uh, through um, the social if you're listening from the podcast, thank you for coming by. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. Um, and I, I bless you in the name of Jesus. You can make comments from whatever platform you're listening from. You can make contacts, contact, a connection, a comment. There must be a way. Uh, just find that way and connect with me and I'll return. You know, I'll respond as soon as I can or as soon as I see the comment. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests, you know, don't hesitate. Just connect. Um, I don't bite. I can't. Anyway, we're doing a virtual thing right now. And also, if you know somebody right now that doesn't have social media, it's all good. A lot of people don't go on social media for good reasons. Um, they, you can send them right over to soulwinnerswithaz.org. And right there on the homepage, they have the podcast player, they have a video player, and also they have the Bible. An interactive online Bible. Free. So, uh, you can't beat that. You can't beat when you can get the word of God right in front of you on your phone device and listen to somebody making comments on it, um, such as me, an evangelist that loves Jesus, loves people, and really believes 100% this is true. So I go all out for the things that I believe in, and you should too. Whatever you believe in, go all out. Amen? Because ultimately, the evidence is going to lead us to the truth. Amen? So I value your time. So let's pray. I don't see any prayer comments or anything like that or prayer concerns or anything like that. And uh, that makes me wonder if uh, we're all good on the social because, uh, like I said, we were having issues um, yesterday uh, during church service as well. So um, might not be. So uh, looks like I'm on. Let me just check the volume here. So we're good. Uh, yeah, so. Strange happenings, man. I don't know if I'm being shadow banned. Um, Because the the funny thing about it, I'll share this video probably like 30 groups and probably get like 10 views. So something is not right, right? So uh, if I'm shadow banned, praise the Lord. Uh, I have a network um, to back it up. I have a God um, that will see justice in this whole thing and will reach the people who he wants to reach and with the gospel message. If you're willing to listen, listen. If you're not, you know, you you have the option to keep it moving. Amen. Um, but I trust and believe that God will show himself to you, reveal himself to you in a truthful way, in a way that you can understand. And he will show himself to be true in your life. Amen. He did it for me. So that means, man, he could do it for anybody. So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this morning, Devo. I thank you for another opportunity to connect with believers 
people who don't believe and people who do believe in you, Father God, all the same. I pray your Holy Spirit will move upon this morning, Devo, and you will help us answer this question of why did you become human, Lord Jesus? I thank you, Lord God, for what you've done for all of us. I thank you, Lord God, that you chose to come to this bankrupt heaven, to come to this earth, to rescue us on a rescue mission, to give us salvation, to not save our spirit, but to save our soul. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are real. Thank you, Lord God, that you will have evidence of your um, deity in both in your scriptures and through experience, through me and through others all around the world. And I praise you for your word and your time and your effort, right? And your concern for me. So I speak life concerning all things living to every single viewer, every single podcast listener, every single person that's connecting now or connecting later. I pray a hedge of protection. I pray health, strength, and protection as well in the name of Jesus over every single family member of my family and every single person that's listening and watching them and their families from the youngest family member to the oldest. And I pray healing and health and wholeness to everyone who's seeking after healing, health, and wholeness. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith and amen. Amen and amen. So I'm going to take a minute to share this with as many people as I can, as many people as possible. And when we come back, we're going to hit up Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Let's go. Wow, this thing is crazy, man. I can't even share. Uh, I have to share one more thing here. And the way this is set up, it's so difficult to share to your own groups. Um, Shout out to the social for doing this. But listen, I go with the flow. Amen. Whatever happens, happens. But I know, I know for sure something's changed here. And it's more difficult to do what I'm doing uh, than it's been before. So... I must be doing something right. I definitely must be doing something right. So, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Christ takes on a human body. Are you kidding me? Why would you do that, Lord? Listen to this. Because God's children are human beings. Made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. See that? He wanted to relate with us. He wanted us to see. Listen, I'm your creator. And I'm not so out there that I'm not relatable, that I'm not, I can't be touched, that I can't, you know, relate to what you're going through. The creator God became a form of a man, in the form of a man, to relate to us. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human, only as a human being could he die, right? Because God can't die. His deity, he's an infinite being. He cannot die. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had, past tense, the power of death. The devil had, had, past tense, the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived, all, A-L-L, who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. And let me slide over to, I want to read it in the Amplified Version, see what it says here. Right. 
Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and 15. This is the Amplified Version. Therefore, since these, his children, share in flesh and blood the physical nature of mankind, he, Jesus himself, in a similar manner, also shared in the same physical nature, but without sin. Yes, Jesus became a man, but a sinless man. Not a man who sinned less. Jesus did not sin at all. According to the scriptures, according to the history, according to the people who knew him, he did not sin. So he himself, in a similar manner, also shared in the same physical nature, but without sin. Very important. Because God does not sin. Jesus did not sin. Even though our younger generation that's following us, they say he must have sinned. He became a human, right? Well, because they're lacking the reading of the scripture for themselves. They're just trying to make reasoning truth in their mind. Instead of comparing what they're reasoning to what Jesus is saying, to what God is saying, to the written word. That's it. It's not hard to tell. So that through experiencing death, he, Jesus, might make powerless, that means ineffective, impotent, him who had the power of death. And who was that? The devil. He had the power of death. Verse 15, and that he might free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in slavery throughout their lives. Amen. And I can testify, the fear of death is haunting. It's haunting, right? My dad died when he was, he was 43 years old. He was young. So I thought I was under the curse of dying young as well. I thought I was not, I was going to die somewhere in my 20s. And then when I passed my 20s, I said, well, I must going to be die somewhere in my 40s just like my dad. I thought it was a curse upon my family. And it was a haunting fear of death. And that fear wasn't from the Spirit of God. That fear was coming from the Spirit of the Antichrist. And I dealt with it. I went through it. But at the age of 30, when I called on Jesus, drunk and high, he came and he rescued me, took that fear of death away. People always say, oh, you know, terrorists, people who believe in their God and they think they're doing things for their God, you know, uh, terrorists, right? Which we label terrorists. People say they, they don't fear of dying. Look, they strap themselves with bombs and they blow themselves up. Well, Christians, right? Oh, we're considered terrorists for other people. Because we're not afraid of death either. But we're not strapping bombs around our bodies and blowing ourselves up. We are putting on the full armor of God and we are ready for battle. And we're not fighting against you. You're not fighting against me if you're a believer. We're fighting principalities in high places. Right? Our war is not between flesh and blood. And our weapons that we use, we're not coming with guns, bats, and all that. They're spiritual weapons. Amen? So therefore... Jesus himself became a human being to show us the way to the Father. He became a human being so that way we can't say, oh, you know, we're here and God is up there and we can't dare ask him nothing. He doesn't understand being a human being. He wouldn't understand what I'm thinking. He wouldn't understand what I'm doing right now. Time out. He became a human. He went through every single temptation we will ever face in our lives. And he went through a lot of pain, more pain than probably I would ever go through my life. To be crucified on the cross, uh, I don't think I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have did it for you or anybody, especially if I knew I was innocent. My pride would not allow me to do it. I would be like, listen, I'm not going on that cross. I'm innocent. I didn't even sin. I didn't even do anything wrong. I'm not going to be pinned on that cross for anybody. That would have been me. But Jesus is not like me. His ways are not like our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts or my thoughts. Amen. He is God who became man to show us that he can relate to every single human being tendency that I have. So if I say, oh, I'm only human, then you're saying, what, Jesus was only human too? No, he was God, the God man. Amen. To show us. He made a decision. We didn't decide for him. Amen. He made his own decision to bankrupt heaven to come to this mess on this earth and this planet. To rescue me and rescue you. Amen. Sister Joyce, good morning. God bless you. God bless you. It was good to see you here. So Christ takes on a human body. And that's deep. Deeper than what I ever thought. I'm thinking, man, why did he do that? Why would he 
He didn't have to, for sure. No one forced Jesus to do anything. And guess what? He doesn't force us to do anything against our will either. So people might be thinking, well, no, nah, I don't want to become a Christian because, you know, if I become a Christian, you know, I have to dress a certain way, I have to do certain things, uh, and I'm forced to go to church. I don't know what kind of Christianity you're thinking about. It could be um, some kind of Christianity that's made up by the man, um, you know, men, that's made up by men, and they following traditions that have no power. Um, but everybody falls into that tradition, falls into line. You might be talking about the religious people, the legalistic Christian people that can't do this, can't do that, and they're forced to do this and forced to do that. They're trying to force other people to do this. They put more laws on top of each other. God's children are human beings, point blank period. God's children are not animals. God's children are not aliens. God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. Just in case you thought that, oh, well, maybe God created robots. No, he created human beings. His children, me as a son of God, you as a daughter of God, we are human beings. But before we were humans doings, like doing things, we were human beings. We were already human. Amen? Now, there's a whole, I could go in so many directions with us being in the created image of God. I could go so many directions when it comes to um, the whole issue of um, child bearing and abortion and all that. Because I could go so many different ways with it. But I know one thing for sure. The creator of humankind, the creator of mankind is the only one, I believe, who can change the laws of a human. Who could change the makeup of a human. Who could say who lives and who dies. Only God has that responsibility. Or only God has that privilege. Only God has that power and authority. Not me. We make decisions based on what we know. God makes decisions based on what he knows. And he knows it all. My knowing and your knowing are very limited. Google don't have enough information that God has. Google um, can only search what was put into the database. God will search our hearts. God will search our minds. God will search all of mankind all at once. In seconds. Hear all our voices, hear all our thoughts, hear all our prayers in seconds. Amen. So if I'm going to search for something that leads to eternity, I'm going to search for Jesus. Amen. Instead of doing a Google search, I'm going to do a Bible search. I'm going to go through his word to see who am I? Why am I a human? What does it mean to be human? I'll go to God's word. There's been a lot of confusion lately about humanity, what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be human, right? A lot of people are having the confusion going on in their lives, gender issues, all that. It's happening. If you're alive and you have a conscience, you know what I'm talking about. It's going on right now in our time, in our day. Brother Jerry, what's up, bro? God bless, man. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So why did Christ become human? Listen, before Jesus saved my life, I had no clue why he would ever do that. It doesn't make sense. Why would God become like me? I I'm, I'm, have issues. God doesn't have issues. God wasn't alone. It was a tri- He's a triune God. The lover, the loved one. So the lover is the father. The loved one is Jesus. And the spirit of love is Holy Spirit God. He already had his own community. Why would he create us? And why would he become part of the creation? Why would he become in a form of man? When you read these verses in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, can you tell if God pays attention to us or to our fears or to our hurts, to our pains? Do you think he doesn't pay attention to what's going on in your life? Think about that real good. All those times that you felt alone, did you feel some kind of presence? And I'm not talking about people who do santaria, witchcraft, voodoo, or anything like that. Oh, they're feeling presence, all right. They're feeling presence from the demons that have deceived them to believe to follow those demons. The devil did that in heaven. Remember, if you read the scripture, the devil convinced angels to come down here with him. He must have promised them something that they would leave heaven in the presence of almighty, all-loving, all-powerful God. And guess what? God allowed it because he wouldn't force not even the angels to obey him. He wouldn't even force Lucifer to, you know, not to stay. Oh, you have to stay against your will. 
You see the grace of God found all throughout the whole Old Covenant, New Covenant, New Testament, Old Testament. You see the grace of God. Even the devil himself is under the grace and the power of God. Amen? Because he should have been annihilated. He's defeated. That's right. And Jesus is the only one who could defeat him. And Jesus has defeated him already. But when you read the narrative, you see the grace of God. Get out. God didn't even <laughs> lift a finger. I believe he sent that archangel Michael to handle business. He threw him out of heaven, but didn't take his power away from him. And knew that, okay, now that the devil himself is lurking to and fro around the earth, then Jesus said, let me pay the earth a little visit to make sure that they know who's king of kings and lord of lords. Let me pay my human children a visit to let them know that he is the way he is the truth and he is the life. And that he has the power over sin, sickness, death, and life. He has the power over that. He has the keys to what? Both heaven and hell. Jesus is the God-man. 100% God, 100% man. Now, if you ask me, uh, explain that, Sam. You're going to have to go to Jesus for that. I can't explain that because it ain't happening here. I'm not 100% God. I'm not 100% man. Amen. At the same time. I am 100% man, one time, amen, but I'm not 100% God. But you know what's the incredible thing? Not only did God come from heaven to earth in the form of a man to show us the way, right, the, how this works, but he also flipped the script. People in the old covenant were trying to create a, a place to house the presence of God. They were trying to create like a church or a building with their human hands to you know, keep the presence of God with them. No human hands could build the kingdom of God. No human hands could build something big enough to contain God. So God flipped the script. And Jesus said, listen, I'm leaving. Um, where I go, you can't come right now. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. So that way, when you're ready, and when I am come back, you have a place in heaven with me. But right now, you can't go there. Right? So he leaves, ascends to the Father to sit down. Because when he's seated, that means his mission is complete. He did it all. It is finished. The sin debt is paid, right? But he sent back one just like him. Holy Spirit God, he flipped the script. We were trying to create something to house the princes of God. And God said, you can't do it, but I'm going to flip the script and give you someone, God in me, right? To live inside of you. We, we're trying to live inside of God. And God said, no, no, no. I'll come to you. I'll live inside of you. God flipped it up. I believe he became human being to show us and our simple way of thinking that he is a God who understands. He is a God who pays attention to your fears and to my fears. He's a God who's concerned with every single concern that I'm concerned with. Why? Because he felt my pain. He knows about my temptations. He knows the fears. He dealt with it himself. He felt humanity. He felt his creation. He became a part of what we call human mankind. So now we have no reason to point a finger at Jesus and say, uh, he will not understand. He doesn't know what it feels like to be hungry. Yes, he does. He doesn't know what it is to fear. No, he doesn't. But his humanity, he must have been afraid of going to that cross. Sooner or later, he went through it. If you read the story of the Garden of Gethsemane, anxiety and all that, what he went through at that moment. Well, he doesn't know what it is to lose a loved one. Yes, he does. And Jesus wept when his best friend Lazarus died. So he knows about that pain. He feels the pain. He's actually compelled. When he feels my pain, he's compelled to help. When he feels your pain, he's compelled to help. Why? Because he knows the human side of things. He knows us in and out. He knows me more than I know myself. He knit me and wove me in my mother's womb in a secret place. And the secret place of your mother's womb too. He knit you together. He put you together. He knows every single part of your anatomy. More than what scientists know. More of what scientists sees. Right? He knows it all. He created us. So he became, I believe he became a human being. So that way we know that God can relate to every single thing that we relate to. Amen? Now, the option you have is to be like, yeah, I don't believe that. I don't believe he could. Um, uh, we could trust in a God who's way out there. And I'm telling you, no, God is not way out there. You trust in Jesus. You put your faith and hope in him. He'll live in here, in your body. 
So he's not way out somewhere. He's actually deeper than you know. He's inside of you. He's working a work in you and through you. And because he became a human in the form of a human, Jesus came. There's people that wrote about him through the history. They were with him, eyewitnesses. They saw him do miracles. They saw him uh, forgive people for sins. He is real. A real historical Jesus. He lived. Oh, you're just saying that because it's in the Bible. No, I'm saying that because he's in me. If I never had the Bible and never read it, and I put my trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, because being drunk and high, I didn't have the scriptures open. There was no preacher with me, nothing. I was drunk and high when I got saved. So really, technically, um, I didn't know what was going to happen. All I know is what I called out God. I didn't say Jesus. I called on God, G-O-D, which is not even his name. But he knew I was calling upon him and I gave him an ultimatum and he changed me. Can't explain it. Don't ask me to explain it. Because if I could explain it, then I would have wrote a book already. I don't know how he did it. I just know that he did it. How do you know it was the God of the Bible? Well, the evidence. When I started reading the scriptures, I was like, that sounds like the God who I believe in. It doesn't sound like another God. Um... Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, I didn't know that at the time, but then I read it, understood it. God gave me revelation on it. I said, but I said, God, and God said, well, you call me because I was truly seeking to change my life. And I knew I couldn't do it on my own. If I could have, I would have. Why wouldn't I? Amen. So if you're going around saying, well, Jesus became a human just to show off or, um, you know, he was created by man. Uh, you know, people think that the Bible was created by man. They get There's a misinterpretation. There's a misunderstanding. Oh, how could you believe a book that men wrote? The same way you believe the book that men wrote that you read. They wrote it. Uh, inspired. Inspired by who? Well, a person who follows Satan and writes books about the devil is inspired by the devil. And the men that wrote the scriptures... Uh, about God, Holy Spirit God, Jesus, the, so the Savior, the Son, the Father, Holy Spirit, they were inspired by God. Men wrote the Bible inspired by God, not inspired by man. Because if men who wrote the Bible were inspired by other men, then the, the God in the Bible would have been complete man. Not 100% man, not 100% God, but just man. And then we would have had some kind of emperor or king that we will all have to pledge allegiance to. And he would no longer be here. Or she would no longer be here. If it was a woman that they chose to be God. Um, if this was all made up. She would be buried or he would be buried somewhere. Or it could be all mystical. That it would be a spirit that nobody saw. Nobody touched. Nobody you know, knew came back or promised to come back. And it could have been a spiritual resurrection. And then we would all be in some kind of mysticism. But Jesus knew all of that. Right, He knew what we would ask. He knew what our concerns would be. He knew that. He became just like us. And he said, let me, let me raise from the dead bodily. Let me do a bodily resurrection. So that way I won't be accused later on of making a story of how I came back spiritually. Because no one would be able to follow that type of evidence. It would just be a story, a legend. But he said, let me make sure that as I came and I was born from a virgin... Right, that there, right there, even though they say um, there's other ancient writings with the same story or whatever, like that. If it's the same story, then it will be the same story, ladies and gentlemen who believe in Osiris and all that other stuff. Um, if it was the same story, it would be the same story. So stop saying something is the same when it's not, right? Oh, I know somebody with your same, the same name, Sam Lopez. Oh, yeah, um, so do I, me. I'm Sam Lopez. You know, another sample, yeah. Are we the same? Oh, no, no, you guys are different, but you have the same name. Our stories could be similar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Um, the other Sam Lopez, man, he got saved drunk and high, too. Um, so did I. But is it the same? No. Same concept, same story, but it's not the same person. Now, we serve the only true, living, holy, righteous, just God. Because we were introduced to the Father through the Son. You might have been saying, well, I went straight to God the Father. Oh, yeah? Did you bypass Jesus on the way? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except by him. 
So either it's simple. We overcomplicate. We try to debate everything. It's simple. It's either the Jesus is telling the truth or he's telling us a lie. Simple. People are, how could you say that? Because it's simple. How, how other way do you want me to decide? I want to decide what's true, what's wrong, what's true, or what's false, what's right, and what's wrong. I make that. I'm part of that decision, right? I could walk away from God right now to go where I don't know, but I have a choice. I could. I wouldn't know what I would do, but I could, and so can you. And the people who are not trusting in God and all this. I was looking at um, some Instagram uh, photos and videos of some people who are young in their twenties. But are wealthy because they're a part of a a business that made them entrepreneurs. Now they have the the chance to travel all over the world. When you hear them speaking, they'll mention God, they'll mention this. But when you see the activity, it's totally opposite because they're maybe confused. Maybe the money is what they're after more than who gave them the ability to get it. It can happen to anybody. Amen? So, especially on social media, by the way. I I don't know why I went there. That was for somebody. So, because of God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. Why? Because only as a human could He die. He wanted to show us that He loved us. He loved the world. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, that whoever, whomever believes in Him shall not die but have eternal life. I'm paraphrasing John 3.16. But you'd be like, so why do people, why don't everybody believe in him? Well, keep on reading John 16, 3, 16, 17, 18, 19. Keep on reading. And Jesus gives you an answer of why people don't believe in him. It's right in the scriptures. This is no mystery. This is no secret. This is not a secret society. We might be deemed a secret society because only Christians know the secret things of the Lord. And only God will reveal secret things if he wants to. Deuteronomy, I think, 29, 29, or 28, 28. Is one of those that Jesus, God says, you know, the secret things belong to him. And if he wants to reveal it, he will. If he wants to conceal it, he will. It's up to God. Amen. But it's also up to us to make the connection, make a decision whether you believe in his deity or not. Do you think Jesus is just a man, just a prophet, or he's God? Amen. Even though what I believe doesn't make it true and what you believe doesn't make a thing true, it's where the evidence leads. And if you're really honest with yourself, whatever religion you're from, whatever background you're in, whatever you're practicing right now, whatever. If you have an opportunity, a moment in your life to see if this is all true, the Bible says, for those who diligently seek after God, you will find them. Amen. For those who are seeking God, you're seeking truth, you will find Jesus. There's no way around him. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So why did Christ become human? Because he wanted to show us, and from what I'm reading here, he wanted to show us that he could relate to us, and we could relate to him, and we could have a connection, and that he is paying attention to every single concern that we're paying attention to. If we're in fear, he's addressing that fear. He's helping us and letting us know and reminding us by his Holy Spirit that he didn't give us a spirit of fear. Do not be afraid. He says that a lot throughout the scriptures. Don't be afraid. Be courageous. Old Testament. Don't be afraid. New Testament. Amen. Don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. Amen. New Testament. Old Testament. Be courageous and bold. Right? Because he is with you. God is with me. He's with you. And not only with us, Holy Spirit, comfort God, the paraclete, um, but he's in us, working through us. Powerful, powerful, powerful. So Hebrews chapter 2, read the whole chapter for yourself, check it out. I hope you are blessed. I hope this inspired you in some way, form, or fashion. Listen, God can relate to all things that we relate to because he became like one of us. I keep on saying like because I have to be careful. Amen? Because he did not sin, so therefore he was not like me 100%. I sinned and I deal with sin, the sinful nature, not him. He didn't have the blood of humans running through his brains. He was born from a virgin. Amen. And the Virgin Mary uh, conceived Holy Spirit um, was con- the Holy Spirit was endowed or given uh, to over to Mary, the baby Jesus. No man was involved in that. The scriptures are clear on that. Joseph did not get with Mary until after after Jesus was born already. So it's historical, it's fact. 
Uh, it's not just faith over reasoning and all that stuff that people talk about, but it's what God is saying. Hebrews chapter 2, read the whole chapter for yourself. When you read these verses, when you read Hebrews chapter 2, you're going to be able to tell that God pays attention to you and to me because he became like us. Whew, there's a lot more there and I, I got to go. But thank you for hanging out with me for this time. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always, always that God is good. Peace.